Welcome back to Full Bore. Today we're going to be taking a 7th Gen Toyota Celica and converting it from its stock halogen headlights to a sleek, modern HID by Xenon flat projector style headlights. And we're not going to be doing it using the Kazuki headlights. These are completely 100% custom. It's easier than you think on Full Bore. <laughs> First thing we need to do is get these old glass lenses off. Now, word to the wise, do not use any metal tools with this. This is not polycarbonate. Uh, glass will chip when using a metal tool with it. We found that out the hard way. So use plastic trim tools. But first, what we're going to do is preheat our oven to 207 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to cook a single light bulb at a time for 10 minutes. That's going to loosen up the glue that binds the glass to the plastic. And we're going to be cooking it on a pizza stone because pizza stones don't transfer heat very well, which makes a perfect surface for cooking the headlights so the plastic doesn't start to warp or melt or anything like that. So our oven is ready. Our headlight is ready to go. We're going to go ahead and do that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put the headlight in the oven, make sure there's room for it to fit. And we're just going to let it sit inside there for 10 minutes. All right, so it's baked in there for just a little more than 10 minutes just because we didn't get to it. But pulling it out now, so we're going to take our headlight. I'm going to remove it. Bring it over to the countertop. And from here, we're going to start pulling it apart by prying just a little bit with our plastic tools. Now... The housing and everything is going to be hot, obviously, so you're going to want to wear something to protect your hands. So, plastic tool to pry. Remember, no metal tools, because metal is just going to chip the glass. And the rule of thumb is, if it's not coming apart easily, uh, don't increase the temperature, but just increase the time, because... Oh, you... yeah. This is going much better than last time. Yeah, so increasing the temperature could shock the material, but increasing the time is just going to let it kind of get to that point where everything is nice and gooey without going too far. Because we're really just trying to melt the glue. And we're going to, once we get this uh, glass headlight off, we're going to want to remove as much of the stock glue as possible because we're going to be using some Morimoto headlight glue. And for reference, uh, if you're wondering about any smells doing this in your home kitchen, uh, I can say from personal experience several times now that there doesn't really seem to be any odors from All right. Now that is a bunch of glue that needs to be removed as much as we can while it's still hot. So this is, this is the part where... Um, you're going to want to have some fun taking your time, getting as much of the gunk off as possible. Now that we've got the glass lens off of the headlight and the glue removed at a sufficient level, uh, this little shield right here needs to come out, and it's just a little Phillips head screwdriver that you're going to need. And it's just the one screw. And out it comes. Anyway, pull that out, and that's going to free us up to put our projectors through this hole. However, we are not quite done yet because if we were to put the projector through here, it would leave us no room to put the pigtail for the bi-xenon flap solenoid. So we're going to have to drill a hole in these headlights in order to get everything to work. So the hole that we're going to drill for the bi-xenon flap solenoid wire is going to be right above this arrow. That's the spot where it's going to allow you to make a hole big enough for the connector to fit through. Now, that being said, we're talking about a Molex style connection. If you're using something like Morimoto headlights with a 9006 connection, you're going to want to just disconnect the wires from the 9006 plug, put those through and reconnect them in the plug because we're not going to be able to make a hole big enough to fit a 9006 connection through here. But in order to do this right, we're going to be using a center punch. So this is an automatic center punch. 
we're going to punch it just above right where the arrow is pointing and by doing that it allows us to make this hole in the back now this hole is just big enough to fit like i was saying before this molex style connection all right so we're going to take our auto center punch and we're going to find that little arrow that's on the bottom of our housing here and we're going to make this center punch just above there because that's going to help us keep our drill bit in place and right here seems to be a good spot to do this anyway because we're going to have to go up pretty big there we go we got a little tiny indent and that's going to be perfectly fine and what we're going to do is we're going to start out with small drill bits and work our way up. We don't want to go with the biggest drill bit right off the bat. We're going to step up a little and a little until we get to the size that we need. And then we're going to do some little funkiness. And I'm going to show you uh, just to make the hole more of an oblong, sort of like an oval rather than just a circle. So right here where that center punch is is where we're going to put the tip of the drill bit so we got a nice little hole right there and on this side we got a hole in there and now we're going to step the drill bit size up just a little bit and we'll go from there The last drill bit size we're going to be using is a 1330 seconds, which is pretty massive, but we've been paying attention, we're stepping up just a little bit. All right, so now that we've got this hole, what we're going to do is we're going to take our drill bit and wiggle it back and forth like this, because that is going to allow us to make an oval, because the shape of a Molex connection is a rectangle. And we just want to basically barely fit it through. Alright, so we're just going to check and make sure our Molex connection fits through here. Which, it will just barely fit if we are gentle and squeeze it through. Now I don't want to push this all the way through because it's actually going to come in through the other side. But we just want to check and make sure that this will actually go through this hole. If we're having some trouble, take that drill bit and wiggle it back and forth like that. And it'll make the oval, oval just a little bigger. So once you get all that taken care of, there's going to be a lot of that dust all up in here. So just take a damp rag and kind of wipe things down and dry it out and get it clean as you see fit. Now the next step is to actually fit the projector in there. And this is probably the easiest and hardest part to do. So we want to route our bi-xenon flap uh, wire through this tiny little hole that we have made. And it goes in just like that. And then, uh, assuming you're using mini H1 projectors, and whether you're using some cheap Odipo ones or more motos, they should fit about the same through this hole. And voila. You're almost done. See, back here, you've got a lot of wiggle room, and this compression nut isn't really going to hold it in place as well as you'd like it to. So you're going to want to have something like this. This is a washer that we took, and we'll put the measurements in the description, and we used a step bit to kind of uh, increase the internal diameter. so that it fits right around the inner portion of this ring and it's a much tighter fit and that's going to give us a nice solid base to put our compression ring around and that's going to hold it in very nicely. Now we got that washer that you saw from Ace Hardware and we took a lot of time using the step bits. Um, perhaps we can probably find uh, the correct size right out the gate but we worked with what we had so uh, we'll let you guys know what the measurements are um, but once you get it set up 
it's in there pretty good. So at this point, uh, you don't want to tighten everything down and you don't want to put the glass on either because with these bi-xenon uh, projectors, there's going to be a cutoff beam. And we want to place this headlight in the car now. And we're going to want to rotate this projector so that that flat cutoff beam is perfectly flat when it's sitting in the vehicle. And once we figure out that position, only then do we tighten down the nut back here. So at this point, we need to level out the flat plane of the beam, which only requires us to hook up the low beam currently. So you need to put the headlight assembly basically in the same position you would once it's permanently fastened to the vehicle. So uh, we got our Mini H1 HID connected to the ballast, and the ballast in this case for right now is just going to go directly through the stock wiring harness, which is 9006 in a Celica, so that makes this really easy. And uh, we're just going to turn it on, find where the flat plane of the beam is, and level it out. All right, so at this point, we're going to turn the car's lights on. And we need to give the HIDs a few seconds to warm up. They're not like incandescents where they're instant on. They take a few seconds to get to their peak brightness. Now, as I was saying before, HIDs have a very flat cutoff line in low beam. This is so you don't blind oncoming traffic. So we just want to get this beam nice and level. And because we didn't screw the projector into the housing super tight, we're able to rotate the projector in the housing to figure out how exactly we want it. So you can see that it can be pretty far off if it's not perfect. So this allows us to really figure it out and dial it in before we finalize the housing. And right about here is what I would consider flat. And there is a method to adjusting the rotation once they're already, uh, once we glue the lens back on, but it's just easier to get the base uh, flat, level, flat line level while it's outside the vehicle or when the lens is not on the uh, housing of the entire assembly. Once you've made your base adjustments, you're going to want to take the headlight housing out and while holding the shroud, you're going to want to tighten the nut on the back that retains it in the housing and once you've done that bolt it up real nice and then do your final adjustments and the thing about this particular setup is even with it relatively tight you can make those tiny tiny adjustments by hand even when it's retained very well so don't worry about getting it you know like ultra snug once you get it to a point where you can kind of shake and wiggle it and that projector is not moving inside of there you're good and that should allow you to make those micro adjustments before we put the glass back on. All right, so the next thing we need to do is apply the new glue where the old glue once was. This Morimoto stuff makes the whole job really easy. It's just like this long licorice kind of looking thing. And we're just gonna take the glue and we're going to just press it into the crevices of where the old glue once was. And we're just gonna kinda unravel it as we go. And just get a little bit in there at a time. Make sure it's, you know, as even as we can make it. So the crevices on this headlight are actually very easy to work with in regards to this stuff. around and then we just need to cut this and we're gonna squish it nice and down into place just making sure we got it in there and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the glass lens and we're gonna place it just like it was before we took it off. And what we're gonna do is, before we put it in the oven, we wanna compress it down and keep it compressed. So we're gonna put a ratchet strap around the housing to keep it nice and compressed while it's in the oven. 
Okay, so these ratchet straps are probably a little overkill given the size, but the general idea is that you are holding everything together while it's in the oven so that it's compressed. So we're going to put this in the oven for seven minutes to let this glue get malleable. And then we're going to take it out and then we're going to ratchet it tight just a little more while the glue is malleable. Now, for this Moromoto stuff, we did have to raise the temperature of the oven to 265 degrees. And we're going to put it in there for the instructions, directions, uh, seven minutes. All right. So now that it's been in the oven for a little bit, the glue is much more malleable. So we're going to push it in a little by hand. And then we're going to use the ratchet strap to gently apply some more force just so the glue really gets set where it needs to set. After putting it in the oven for another five minutes, the glue has become even more malleable and even easier to squish in place. So while this headlights glue is cooling down, we're going to keep the ratchet strap on for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to take it on off and uh, we're going to do the other lights. So this is what the headlight's gonna look like once the glass is reassembled. Now, typically speaking, polycarbonate on your lens is gonna be better than glass because on a molecular level, glass is not as uh, flat as polycarbonate's gonna be. But as you're about to see, uh, these are gonna be perfectly fine regardless. Now, we are not quite done yet because the back does need uh, some things addressed. So uh, as, as we've noted, there is this big hole and there's also uh, the holes that go into the rest of the housing on the back. Now, uh, your headlights will have these on the back, and these are gaskets. And as it turns out, uh, this gasket will completely cover everything without any problem. So we won't actually need to put any DAP silicone in there like I was originally thinking, which is perfect. It's going to make future modifications even easier when we need to come back to these. So we're going to go ahead and put this gasket back on, and then we're going to attach the mounting system to hold and retain the HIDs. All right, so this is what the back is going to end up looking like when you're done. We've got the retaining mechanism for the HIDs in place. We've got the gasket so that everything is nice and sealed. We got the front of the headlights all glued up and ready to go. We just got one more light to go to do this with and then we have to aim the lights. So now we need to discuss how to wire everything up because we are going from a setup where the low beam was this headlight and then when you turn the high beams on the other headlight would add another light, but since we have a bi-xenon projector, the high and low beams are being done on a single headlight housing. So, to achieve this, the wiring is actually quite simple. We take the factory power that goes into the low beam, and we use that to feed into our ballast, then into our igniters, and then the amp connectors that plug directly into the bulb. However, because we have to actuate a solenoid to turn uh, the little flap that allows you to switch between high and low beam, we need to take the wiring that was powering lights in this headlight to, get, to give a signal to the solenoid in here to move. So to do that, we are using a 9006 to Molex converter because the connection for the solenoid is Molex. If you're using a Moromoto um, projector, then you'll actually be able to use the 9006 connection directly from the wiring harness because these are all 9006 connections. So, just to recap, power comes in to this ballast when the lights turn on for low beam. When you want to turn on high beam, what used to power the high beam bulbs is now just flipping the solenoid to actuate the flap that goes up and down for high and low beams. Simple. We've got the headlights turned on and we still have that beautiful flat cutoff line. Now this is a low beam, go ahead turn on high. Alright, low, high, low. I'm going to show you over here, high, low, high, low. All right, so the bi-xenon projector does work with this wiring setup. 
So this is in fact a better situation than those $700 aftermarket Kazuki headlights from Japan. After you have the headlights completely installed and the bumper back on, it is now time to aim your headlights because if you have them aimed too low, you won't see anywhere down the road. But if you have them aimed too high, you'll end up blinding oncoming traffic and that could get you pulled over. So there is a procedure. Other uh, companies have made some uh, pretty good explanations. So I'll put a link to a good how to aim your video tutorial in the description from someone else. But once we have it all aimed up properly and nicely, we can then go take her on the road and see what it looks like. When you're all done, your new lights should look pretty much like this. These are the low beams. Then switch it over to high beams. And there you go. And then back to low. And huzzah. You now have bi-xenon HID bulbs in your Toyota Celica.